Uh, well, we'll get to that. Um, going down quickly. Uh, of course, since the last time we met, we have made the HTTP and Vivox viewer the default release. Yay! Get busy Yay. on your murders. I don't think there's a big applause going on right now. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> sorry. Uh, we we had we had ugly merges internally too. I spent the, most of the last uh, beginning of this week trying to get trying to get that merged for uh, the quick references viewer. Um, we have a new main viewer in the pipeline. A couple of them actually. Graphics quick preferences should get an update pretty soon, but we've got a bug or two that need to get addressed in the release candidate before we can put it out there. Um, and we are perilously close to freezing the skeleton for Bento. So that project viewer will get an update real soon now. Perilous has a negative connotation. Is, is that a <laughs> bad thing? <laughs> well, uh, uh, you, you got know, me worried it's, now. It's, it's one of those things that you know, will ultimately make some people unhappy because at some point we will say we're going to stop making improvements. And if their particular change that they wanted to the skeleton was on the wrong side of the line, they lose. And uh, oh dear. You know, it's just that at some point we have to stop because we can't bring any of this to Agni and allow Bento compatible content to be uploaded on Agni until we've stopped changing the skeletons so that we won't have people uploading. Uh, so what's the final skeleton like? Uh, what, 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 how many bones is it going to be officially finally um, in the end? Uh, we'll tell you when we've actually frozen it. Well, no, because you're perilously close, so that yeah, you should be able to know. What's the current What's the current count here? Uh, let's see. Last time I looked, we had 123, um, you know, regular bones plus the original collision volumes. No. We also added a couple of um, attachment points, and uh, might wind up with a couple more before it's all uh, shaken up. Wow! All right. So, lots of new things to play with. Okay, Willie has a really good question there. Uh, yes, we have done performance tests. That's sort of how we came up with the limit on how many... It turns out that the total number of bones is not as important as the number of bones any given mesh is rigged to. Um, that's what ends up being the key yeah, there number. There are graphics cards issues for how many, how many joints a given mesh can be rigged to. Um, and that's so. and that's why we have a limit on that that is actually lower than the total bones in the in the skeleton. Do you, so, it, so are you so expecting certain possible. video cards to have problems? No, no. We we think that that number will be reasonably doable for anything that would for anything that would be usable for Second Life anyway, right? Um, I mean, there are, of course, systems in the world that don't do well on Second Life without any Binto content. Like Intel and, cards. And they still won't do any better. But we we think we won't make things dramatically yeah. worse. Like, obviously, we will get more uh, more exposure to different systems once this uh, is, is in Agni and more people jump into testing. Um, but uh, right. based on our best estimates, we, we think we can make it work with the, the joint count per mesh that we have now. And we're going to do a bit more review on performance, too. This Now that we've got a final skeleton, um, you know, we, we had kind of estimated performance numbers based on some faked up, uh, uh, you know, faked up skeletons with a lot of joints, which, uh, you know, gave us some, some decent data. But uh, it's, it's a little tentative because it's not real world use cases. But we're we're getting there. Um, so progress is being made on that, and uh, we we hope to uh, in the not too distant future, which I won't quantify. Uh, we will we will decide that we're done with the the skeleton and um, associated 
changes that are important for content backwards compatibility. And then we'll throw the switch and allow that content to be upgraded on to be updated on Agni and the project viewer will be usable on Agni. So that'll be the next big milestone in that project. And it's how long wait I, I realize you can't say specifically. Um how much time do you think third party viewers will have with the Vento viewer code before Well the Vento viewer code is out. Before release, I mean. Like, from the time you put out a project viewer, how long do we have to release it? Um, I, I guess I don't understand the question. We've had a project viewer for months. And you've had access to the code for all of that time. Yeah, well, I'm, there, but I mean on Agni. More recent changes, though, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there'll be changes up really until we... Need to be picked up, tip it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... Uh, I, I think it will probably end up having a relatively long project viewer release candidate cycle just because it touches so much stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, That's kind of what it's looking hopefully for. Hopefully not nearly as long as graphics quick preferences is at. Uh, so, uh... Uh, that's that's a subject we're not going to get into today, Luminous. Um, um, okay, so that's all. That's all happening. Um, uh, the Rift viewer, we are actively seized of the problem. People are working on it, and we hope to have an update soon. But uh, that's since that's a question of making things work that don't, that it is even less predictable than usual, but we are committed to getting that working again. On the, the final production SDK, which keeps changing, um, and for support for the consumer hardware, which at least some people are beginning to get now. So watch this space, that's still coming. A uh, couple other things I wanted to talk about. Um, the, the HTTP viewer, in addition to HTTP, had a bunch of fixes for voice, both in how we interact with the, the SL voice process and in the SL voice process itself. Uh, there were a whole bunch of robustness improvements in the SL voice process. Vivox believes that SL voice from the from our current default release viewer should be drop-in compatible with any relatively recent um, other viewers. So you all might want to try doing some testing with that on your viewers and consider incorporating that update. Um, it's it's got a lot of it's got a lot of fixes to um, voice quality issues and to dropouts and so forth. Um, so on connection failure. Well, there's been there's been a lot of uh, widespread dropouts, but I mean, like not by just one person, but a whole read but, set no, of that, it, it it, it won't address those. It's okay, in fact, it's not usually whole regions. It's usually. Uh, many, many regions. Chunks it's, of the grid, yeah. It's, well, it's chunks of the Vivox service. Um, they've been having some trouble with people uh, doing denial of service attacks on them, and we're, we're working with them on that. But And they're, they're getting better at it. The, the outages are much shorter than they, than they used to be. Uh, and they're we, they're we very well that timed, way. though. The outages are perfectly <laughs> well, timed. Uh, well, the, right when you the need it the ones. most. Yeah, those, yeah. We we we've had a couple of uh, our group status meetings that have had to be rescheduled to or moved yeah. to a different service. Um, but uh, it's uh, we're, we're working on that in in a variety of ways. But the the point that I want to make is that uh, you know this none of this has any effect on 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 that and. Uh, uh, we think there may be some improvements yet to be made 
in the reconnection behavior of SL voice um, in the presence of those. And we're, we're working with Vivox to try to try to narrow that down so that, because in fact, the service is recovering faster than the clients are. And, and we're not quite sure why, why that is. So we're working on that with them. But, and so that'll be in the next round of improvements whenever those come out. Um, we are working on a bunch of next round improvements, both for um, some, some voice privacy improvements, uh, some uh, other security improvements to voice. Uh, so those will be coming in a, in a future viewer update. And those will probably, uh, in fact, those will certainly require uh, that you upgrade to the version of SL Voice that comes with that. And that one won't be backwards compatible with the current one. That is, you won't be able to take that one out and drop it into an older viewer. Um, but we think that the current SL Voice, the one from the 403 Linden viewer, could be dropped into an older viewer, and you'd pick up most of the improvements. So mm -hmm. you, you might want to test that. Obviously, you should test that if you're before you think about putting it out. But uh, it, it's it's going it's coming. Um, Okay. Yeah. Okay. And there's a new mate viewer. Breaking news. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're 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 trying to you know keep up the steady drumbeat of fixes and improvements. Um. The oh the other new bit of news is why Sherbert is here. So Sherbert has been working on a nice new widget that you can use on any of your web properties. Sherbert, you want to? Sure. Intro that. Sure. So the idea is that um, generally, if you're trying to get someone to your cool place in Second Life from some other place on the web, there are usually a couple of jumps where you have to jump to maps first and then launch the viewer. So what we are, what this widget will do is that, um, you can attach it arbitrarily to any link anywhere just by uh, linking to our JavaScript and then adding the class teleport to the link. And if you do that, when you click on the link, it will see whether or not you have a viewer installed. And if you do, it will launch the viewer and try to go to that place. And if you don't, it will take you to the maps page for that place. And this is it can work if you have a maps link in your link or if you have a, a slurl in your link, either way. So, for instance, if there's a link that has a slurl in it and the person doesn't have a viewer, when they click on that, it'll take them to the maps page for that place. And if they have a viewer and it's the maps link, it'll take them, it'll launch the viewer for them anyway. What if they've got more than one viewer? It, well, um, that's operating system dependent. It's it's, yeah, it's, it's it's whatever the OS thinks Second Life URLs should be launched by. I remember Lord Greg Greg years ago developed a little app that you could run, and when you clicked on a slur, it would actually launch the app, and the app would give you a list of viewers on your system, and you could check which one, and then it would launch the viewer. Yeah, well, that's it. Uh, um, how how a URL scheme gets handled is up to the operating system and what you've registered with the operating right, system right. to handle it. So, um, so usually, this widget so would actually work with that app. Just, right. So usually what Kada is saying is, is true. It's whatever, whatever you've most recently installed that claims to handle Second Life colon URL. Uh, but on a Mac, I think it actually uses the highest version number. Is oh, it, does not it? the last installed. Uh huh. That makes sense. So I always well. get bento. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Well, I I usually get whatever the most recent test viewer I've installed is. So that makes sense. Uh, so, um, anyway, that's uh, that's hot off the presses. Uh, it's we're. It has not been through a full QA cycle yet, but 
We figure it's harmless to have you guys participate in the QA cycle, so... Are you sure? Whirly's uh, here, well, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> That's not <laughs> harmless. <laughs> um, so we'll... We'll see how that goes, but we're gonna. That's going to be a, a you know a new addition to the collection of web widgets we make generally available for Second Life. Cool. That ability, um, which is which is uh, fun, and we'll. we'll oh, and ours have, got a good question there. We'll have, probably have more in the family of, of things there. Will there be a tools and tech blog post when the widget goes live? Actually, that's a really good idea. Sherbert, make a note. Yes, I you will make a note of that. Blog post. I Thank will, you. uh, I'll add that to the Jira. Yeah, good idea. Um, can we get jQuery updated so it doesn't break on the latest CEF? Um, well, we can't update jQuery. What? What jQuery are we talking about? For which? For what purpose? Yeah, I know what CEF is. Oh, oh, well, um, yeah. So this new widget doesn't bundle jQuery with the SL widgets. Um, have we got a JIRA on the fact that we have a problem with jQuery in the existing SL widgets? Nobody's answering my question. Um, I forgot to file it. Okay. Oh, shame on you. Well, yeah. I have to do a thousand Folks things. Folks, we're not told about. We're things. much worse at fixing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Your psychic abilities are not up to snuff. Yeah, my, my psychic. Hat is drop. <laughs> uh, that would that would have made a, a good April Fool's joke from you guys, actually. Jira, there's a reason for it. It's a, <laughs> a job, uh, it work. a job listing for telepaths. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'd burn them out pretty fast, I think. Um, yeah. So, uh, but. Uh, I should point out that, in fact, we very carefully removed the the earlier versions of of this of this new teleport here widget uh, had followed the pattern of using jQuery, and um, and we Sherbert did a fair amount of work to pull that requirement out so that we don't need it. Yes, the, the widget should have no dependencies on anything other than native JavaScript. So hopefully that is in fact true. Yay. Um, all right, so that's that's that. Um, please have fun with it, and please file Jira's if you find problems with it. Um, touching on the other oh, uh, item from the agenda page, we have not come to any final decisions and don't have a progress update on Invisibrims. Uh, so no news on that front. But we have not by any means forgotten about the problem. We just hadn't really got an update for you. So. Well, sort of. We have the, I'm pretty sure we have the fix for order of mm, that's in the main viewer that's just gone out but i need to so. check whether it got merged in or not right well it got fixed like we said fixed yeah fixed as in it's back to being as clunky as it was before or something like that um So, 
Okay, I, I have a, a quick question, something that we've been noticing, well, I don't know if I'd say recently, interest list, it seems to be interest list related. And I'm just wondering how many other people here are have experienced um, a phenomenon where an, an avatar, an agent is right next to you, but yet when you look at them on your radar, they're actually floating, you know, 400 meters away in the air somewhere. Anybody Jess, is that the one that makes it look like the avatar is visible? And well, the and there, there are a few variations to this. Can you, um, there, can you that's one of them. That, can you restate that in terms of the behavior on our viewer, which means you may not use the term radar? Oh, sorry, people panel. Actually, it's called people panel on ours as well. Um, but essentially, the effect is that uh, they are right next to you or near you, but effectively invisible to you. Um, even though the radar, sorry, the people panel will indicate their distance as moving. So the viewer seems to know where they are, um, but just has them in the wrong place. That's what that's, I that's have right, seen. That's right, Pantera. I, I've seen that, Jessica. And it's really M many, many map. Many map will show them as being where they actually are, right next to you. Depending on the version of it that you're actually seeing, and one in one case it shows them further away from you, like meters and meters up to you know thousand meters or so away from you. In other cases, it shows them standing right beside you. Well, uh, the problem is okay, so, the problem is so, reproducing it. Uh, well, wait a minute. No, the, the problem is still describing it clearly. So, yeah. so uh, uh, restate restate the problem in terms of oh, where okay, the so avatar it, is rendered and right, right. where the avatar is reported to be by the by the map. By, the, by mini, your, the mini map will show them standing right beside you in some cases, whereas which is where they are. Were to, if you were to zoom in on them using the people panel, right click, zoom in, you'll see them a hundred meters away from you in some cases. In some cases, they're, 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 you, you would, in some cases, you will see a voice dot and a name tag, but no avatar. But the avatar will be like a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, maybe even as high as one thousand meters above the sim. But the name tag and voice tag are there right beside you. But is the is the only difference in their position the the altitude or is it's it, a, it's a, no, no. It, it it it's visually they're somewhere else uh, but as far as the the viewer their, their chat is right next to you um, it's just that the, it's 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 a it's a detachment with what your what the viewer is rendering versus where they actually are yeah well. Uh, it's it's the... not filed because it's difficult to reproduce. Um, you can't reproduce it reliably. It just happens or doesn't. And sometimes, if you have that person then sit, suddenly they will appear. Sometimes they'll actually be standing next to you, and then when they sit, they'll disappear. And we're just trying to determine whether this is interest list, whether it's uh, an oct tree or a render issue, or... So we've not followed because we're not quite sure what's causing it yet. And do you have an so approximate idea when you started reporting? Oh, shortly before Christmas was the first time I started noticing it. Worlds. Well, I've seen three different versions of it, and all three different versions that I've seen of this one have all been on very laggy regions. One version, I even when I came into that person, they're right there beside me. But the mini map shows them to be like 349 meters. No, like we've checked that, Cryo. We've, we've checked that. It, it's not, uh, and and in fact, because the first thing you think is obviously the 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 viewer is not receiving the update from the server. But actually, it is because if said person, so on my people panel, it shows them as 400 meters away or whatever, even though I know they're beside me. If they start walking. It'll actually change in, in the people panel, their distance to me. So the viewer is tracking where they are. It just thinks that they're offset from where they actually are. Well, sounds interesting and hard to debug. 
that's that's why it's not reported yet, at least not by me or Ed, because we're we're still trying to figure out how to explain it yeah, and I, how to. I certain I certainly haven't seen it, but yeah, e even how to repro. Channel it. uses course location to show you the location. Drawables come as object update packets, which are very prone to getting lost. Hmm. Yeah, but you wouldn't expect the difference to be that large before before you, you wouldn't. If um and if you're funny. getting a report of something like this, um, oh, if you can immediately ourselves. ask about, or if you're seeing we're, it yourself, seeing immediately ourselves. check your packet loss. Just yeah, we have we have reference yeah. and uh, yeah. zero. If you can't repro it, case. don't repro it, but screenshot it and file it. All right. Yeah. Okay. We can do that. Um, it's happening with me nearly nearly on a daily basis. Um, hmm. And and that's the other thing that's strange is some people can reper well I say reproduce it you can't reproduce it reliably you can't just say do this and this and it'll happen but um, it, it's um, rearing its head more often for some people than for others but it doesn't seem to be packet related. And the, the other thing is it can be you can have four people standing there and only one person can't see the one avatar. Uh, actually, what it reminds me of is when we were doing the server-side baking appearance and Jessica rendered invisible during the beta testing on this grid. If you remember that, us, that's what this reminds me of. Well, yeah, I mean, having an avatar not be visible or not be visible where it is is, is unfortunately one of those things that um you know all uh, any number of different bugs could cause that symptom explained that simply so you know it's like the pants flare problem right? yeah it's it's a, we've, it's we've not probably a... found 10 different bugs that all end up being pants flare doesn't work see with the interest list the the bug with the with interest list is that and and we still see that occasionally is that you know an object is there but it's not rendering for you until you, you know, left click in the vicinity of where it is and suddenly it will appear to you. Um, it, it's similar to that, except it's affecting agents instead of objects. And left clicking them does nothing. Yeah, so having them teleport, teleport back in is fine. Usually they're fixed. But it, so is clicking on them a solution? No. 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 How can you click on something you can't see? Well, in many cases, a lot of times you can still you're see clicking on an agent who's actually not there. Like, where you're rendering them is not where they actually are. Right. So you can't click on them when you're rendering them? No. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very strange. It's, it's Fascinating. Very strange. Yeah. Very so anyway, I'll, I'll try sometimes. to reproduce it on the, on the linen viewer. And if I can, then I'll, I'll screenshot and, and um, attach logs and all that stuff. Yeah. In fact, in fact, if I do that, then um, Oz, if, if it's all right with you, or maybe Grumpity, uh, I'll message you guys directly and say, grab server logs while they're still fresh. Yeah. This is, yeah, where, it, this is where it happened. Depending on how busy a region is, we only have a couple of days. To yeah. yeah, yeah. Get logs. Okay. Yeah. okay. Sure. Go ahead. Um, sounds like an interesting problem. Uh, I'm also not convinced that it, it may be Firestorm specific, which is one of the reasons why I'm asking if anyone else has experienced it here who's not on Firestorm. Uh, it yeah, may uh, well be a Firestorm specific issue. Uh, I'm afraid I'm a poor person to ask for that. Um, okay. Uh, I think... We have used up what I had for an agenda. So, other new? Uh, not much topics? from us. Just we 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 made the internet rage and blocked our four six nine version. XP and ten point six users are now. Um, what is the polite term? <laughs> Spread <Spirit laughs> to lynch us. <laughs> uh, officially angry. Is that the polite term, Jessica? Yeah, unhappy. Officially angry. And uh, otherwise, that's about it from us. Uh, 477 seems to be good. Okay. Uh, and are you getting working on a 
on a release that will incorporate the HTTP changes and the new voice? Oh, it, it's already merged. Um, there, there are still, I believe, some problems. I don't know the specifics. I think, um, I think Drake and um, and uh, Cryo can attest to some of the problems. Possibly. <laughs> oh, we are. Uh, the other Oops. update that I didn't mention is that we are still cranking away on the 64-bit project. Uh, in fact, we've gotten to the point where we're what we're starting on now is actually building viewers and, instead of just building libraries. So that's good. And uh, where are you guys maybe, on the 64-bit stuff? Maybe we'll be ready with a project viewer sometime. So, hmm. uh, any any idea on when on how soon maybe? No, it's not ready. really. When it's when it's cooked. <laughs> Um, well, I was curious about the graphics test viewer, if it's starting to look good or not. Mostly, but it, uh, the, it, it picked up a couple of bird bugs that are un unfortunate in the, in the merge from HTTP. Well, that were noticed around the same time as the QA it got when it was merged with HTTP. It may have actually had some of them for a while. Um, among which is that it's not uploading crash reports. And Rumpity quite correctly will not let me ship it if it won't upload crash reports. So that's what I was working on right before we came into this meeting. Um, and okay. which I will go back to after we get out of this meeting. Okay, and speaking so of have another... right, Go ahead, Jess. Uh, it, well, is yours on the same topic as mine? Yeah, mine's on the same topic. Okay, you go first. With regards to the graphics viewer, am I correct in the results that I've seen when testing it that uh, uh, graphics crashers that are worn are going to be pretty much a thing of the past as long as you uh, have it, it set reasonable? To, uh, I, I hesitate to make blanket predictions, but um, I have been in the presence of people attempting to use uh, graphics crashers uh, and been relatively unaffected. Um, nice. that's my, that was my it, experience too, but I just wanted it, to confirm that. It does, have, it does have some frame rate impact, and I think that that's just, uh, I, I think that's probably also fixable, although I'm not gonna try to make sure that I fix it before we uh, ship this thing. Um, I think that we're still spending a bunch of time computing the complexity of objects we've already decided not to render. Um, and so I think there's a little further improvement available, but uh, but uh, it doesn't freeze up your display or crash your display the way the way it used to. Yeah, that was my experience. I, I tested Thanks with for coming, uh, Monty. one on Firestorm and one on the... Uh, test project viewer and uh, yes. with somebody with a graphics crasher and Firestorm went down like uh, nothing and there was a slight hit but that was it. Cool. Right. Um, a, a note of caution um, because we got so many complaints about people being confused that they had set the maximum avatar complexity value to unlimited and yet still saw people as rainbow people uh, be, and, and the reason that that was usually the reason that that was happening was that they, they either had attachments with too much geometry or attachments with a too much surface area. We ended up deciding that the attachments with too much geometry was not worth it. And we've removed that value altogether. It's no, the, the, the variable no longer does anything and that's not a criteria anymore. So it's only avatar rendering complexity and attachment surface area that control whether or not you're, you're fully rendered. Uh, if you set the avatar rendering complexity to unlimited, neither one will, you, you shouldn't ever see rainbow people. Um, neither one will trigger a, a, a muted imposter rendering. So 
And if you do that, you will be subject to the yeah. abusive objects that, that leverage excessive surface area, um, as well as being subject to just your ordinary, everyday abusive avatars. Um, so a, a note of caution, you might want to set it to, you know, 350 or 1,000 or something rather than unlimited. Um, just so that you, you do have some protection from the, the, the uh, surface area exploits. Um, the maximum avatar rendering complexity, because turning that all the way to unlimited disables the other check as well. So that it just means don't show me rainbow people. So that's kind of a simplification of the UI really, but it also introduces a vulnerability you wouldn't have otherwise had. So, um, but, you know, hopefully we're, we're getting down to the last few problems on that. Thank you. Did you have something else on that area, Jessica? Uh, no, mine was a different area for Grumpity. I, I have oh. a quick note, uh, mostly for Whirly on quick graphics. Um, we cannot use the term Jelly Baby because it's copyrighted and Are a registered serious? trademark. Yeah. So it's a trademark. So it's a trademark yeah. name. We can't use it. So <laughs> we can agree on rainbow people or anything else, but if you continue to use Jelly Baby in the comments and explanations, then people won't be able to find documentation on it because it's a sticky name and we all use it internally too now. Um, thanks a lot. So uh, what are you going to name it? <laughs> formerly? But we can't keep using it. Yeah. Um, what you, we can what name, you formally we, we don't it? have a formal name. Right yeah, now, it's something immemorable. Well, no, we don't. We just call them muted avatars. But Hmm. Um. could do an internet vote. Vote even vote, Chris. We, the we vote will, fake <laughs> one, yeah. We, we, are, we are open to suggestions. Let's put it that way. Okay. Uh, On okay. trademark okay. suggestions. We'll, we'll, right, exactly. Uh, uh, suggestions <laughs> that will not get us in trouble either with our lawyers or with anybody else's lawyers. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> boat face. Yeah, that's a good one. I just had a question about um, uh, API features. I know it's not the proper form for it, but API features. They're mm -hmm. in QA. Oh, the in QA. They're, they're, oh, but there's now well, they one were more in change. QA last week, so they should be done QA. La now. la la. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, you know, it's not my team doing the work, so I can only push on them so much. Like, I can't withhold food or any sort of I would totally other food. motivation. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, there are some good developments on that front, too. Okay. Um, and I will communicate them really soon. Cool. Yay. Yeah. And, oh, and well, wait a minute. That means I got more work. You, so the good developments, you, I can tell you what they are. The good development is that we will no longer need to email a nonce to create an account. Uh, instead, you will link the new user to a page that's owned by Linden Lab where they'll enter the sensitive information and then we'll send them back to you. So it'll work the way, a, it, it'll work the way PayPal does, right? When you, yeah. when you pay with PayPal somewhere, it links to there. And then when you fill out that the page, really... it, links, it links you back. It, the, the trouble with that is is going to be that although we, the visibility it, it's actually being you're being sent to a more secure place the 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 observer is going to see that as though they're going that they're being moved to a different place and therefore it's less secure. Uh, it's optics. Believe me, believe me, we are more than aware of all of the bad qualities that that has. <laughs> it is the best we can do, and that's it. Believe Grumpy me, this was spent, quite a fight. Grumpy has spent so much time and energy on this. It's oh, I know, I know. So I, I'm, I'm not. I don't. So. I don't. Nobody here. Uh, I'm not 
upset about it against anybody here. It's it's the lawyers. I realize it's well. I realize it's unfortunately the world is legally in a very and the internet is in a very different place. Or fortunately, actually, for you know the rest of us, is in a very mm. different legal place than it was twelve years ago. And um, if we don't change with it, we'll be sued out of existence. Right. We're talking so, about uh, the registration API for the Gateway Project, Canada. Yeah, this is uh, for right. Gateway people who want to set up registration APIs so that they can create Second Life accounts. There's some information that we can't let the third party handle for us. We have to handle it directly. So the workflow will be, um, we spend lots of money advertising, we get people to our landing page, and then we have to tell people to leave our landing page, go somewhere else to sign up, and then they'll Well, no, back. no. So it will be more transparent than that. I can throw you a wireframe to give a general idea. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you actually, you, you actually could implement it in iframe if you wanted to. Well, that, okay, that's, yeah, the iframe I'm good with. Well, um, it's it's not going to help as much as you would hope it would, but I, I'm I'm going to show you. you see her wireframe. Yeah, okay. um, it's it's not ideal, but it's um, non interrupted. Yeah. So the the biggest problem with sending people to email is that they're leaving your flow, um, yeah. and this way we avoid taking them out of your flow. They just click a button, they go to the next page, like you know the way you would through click through a registration page. Um. So to them, it's fairly transparent um, that it's, um, well, we have to tell them that they're going to another property that's owned by Linden Lab and not by you, the registrar. Um, yeah. We can maintain the general appearance of a single flow. Mm -hmm. And will they have, I, I assume then at the very least, then we'll have the same functionality that your API has, as in if they enter a name that's already taken, as soon as they enter it, it'll tell them it's taken, or do they have to hit submit before they're told they have to re-enter everything again? Because uh, currently the way that works, oh god, that's horrible. Because the current way that it works is user goes in, they enter their name that they want, they enter their email address, their date of birth, month, day, year, um, their email address. Uh, yeah, but yeah, a lot of that else. stuff they is going to be on the. A lot of that well, stuff is they, going to be on the page that we go to. So, Well, but they hit submit, and then it comes back and says, sorry, the name is taken, and then they have to enter everything all over again. They have to try to pick any another mistake. name, enter their birth name, name or all any that mistake. stuff. This, any is, this mistake, is probably yeah. the wrong form, but um, good is, news, sorry, bad news. Good news is uh, you will basically only be entering the name and choosing an avatar. Um, and maybe opting into an experience or whatever on that first page, and then email, birth date, and uh, password and security question all have to happen on the Linden page. Which, by okay, which time, they've already gotten the name they want. So by that time, they've already gotten back the response that the name is taken, if it is, and chosen. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's not terrible. It's... Maybe it's subpar, but it's like. but it's yeah. No, I know, I realize that it's not. This is not by your guys' choice. I do realize that. Uh, okay. Anyway, so, wrong forum. My apologies. that's coming up. That's that's coming up. So we're 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 getting there, and we have finally got you know buy-in from everybody on on what it should be, which was actually by far the hardest part. Uh, all right. Uh, anything else? And that's it on my end that I can think of. Okay. Uh, see you in... What, you're getting time back on us? Great, so. I may actually get some code written today. Stats. <laughs> uh, stats. They're working stats. on it. Stats. Stats. Uh, well, stats. I wouldn't be able to give you anything that was very good for comparison on our viewer because it hasn't been out long enough. But um, I, I can do I can do a round in a week or so. Okay, cool. Right. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend, everybody. Nice meeting you, Sherbert. And thanks, everybody. Nice meeting and you all too. And Thank tomorrow you. I celebrate my my birthday. Mm. Happy birthday! Happy Thank birthday! You. Yeah. Okay.
Hello. Take care, Petra. Oh, Petra. Ryder got a new gesture while he while he was here. He got, he got that really soon gesture that he needed. <laughs> All right, just back to cleaning your mess up. Anyway, bye, Slater. I'll see you later. <laughs> bye. Um, actually, I've got to get back to IRL work. Um,